we want things to fall into place the way we want things to fall in place, but in life don't happen like that. Sometimes you'll be surprised at what your journey and your path is. Welcome to the Don't Let That Go Over Your Head podcast, starring Q the Boss. Yo, 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 yo. Welcome back to another episode of Don't Let That Go Over Your Head podcast. They call me Q the Boss. And today, we have a very, 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 very special topic. Today, we're talking about healing and trusting the process of healing. I think a lot of people need to heal. You know, we have uh, allowed ourselves to get into a rut. A lot of people aren't happy, right? And the sad thing about being happy is happiness is a choice. It's a self thing. You got to pursue your own self when it comes to happiness. But too many people are looking for someone else to make them happy. And when you're consciously looking for someone else to make you happy, you're going to always need them to make you happy. That is unhealthy. You got to love on yourself. You know, the funny thing is the other day I was talking to a particular guy. And for me, I'm very self-confident. I'm self-aware and I'm self-confident. I think people misconstrue confidence, right, with you being arrogant or, or you, you believing in yourself. Sometimes people put the levels that they believe on themselves on you, ultimately making a problem when you believe highly of yourself. Let's try to the fence, right? Look at this fence. You have confidence. You have arrogance. You also have uh, um, conceited. Those things, they lie on the same fence. And the reason being is because they say being self, highly thinking highly of oneself, right? But how do we know the difference? The difference is you have to believe highly of yourself in order to achieve anything great. You're going to have more people pulling for your feet than they're going to be pushing you up. And we have to accept that. More people will be pulling for your feet than pulling you up. And that's just the truth. But again, you can't be sitting back worrying about who's not supporting or who's supporting you. You have to heal. For all of my people on my live today who's healing, right, who's been through something, trauma, right, who's lost someone they loved, I want, I want, I want, I want to give you this show. This episode is about you. It's knowing that you have to heal, right? A lot of us still haven't healed. You know, I, I know people that are still fighting family problems, right? Still fighting family problems. The things they've been through with their uncles and their aunties and their cousins and their sisters and their brothers. I'm going to tell somebody on my live this today, but somebody's going to feel a little way about this. You cannot make someone love you, right, who don't love you. When someone don't love you and they're showing you that they don't love you, you just have to accept the fact that they don't love you. But you just want to force someone to love you because someone that loves you will learn how to love you. Never ch uh, challenging the way you want to be loved. We have to accept the way we want to be loved and hold yourself to that standard. See, the problem is when you have a high uh, regard of respect for yourself, people will want you to disregard yourself and ultimately bring you down to the level they want you to be at. Once you set your standard, you have to hold yourself to that standard. And if a person is not willing to pay the price, then it's time to remove yourself. You can't be mad at the fact that the person you may love may not love you the way you want to be loved. It's a healing process. When a person learns to heal, they ultimately put themselves around people who respect, who, who honor, who have integrity, and who believes in them. But too many of us are so warped with our beliefs. Our beliefs are weird. Here's a, here's a, here's a, here's a, a mentality that's warped. We're crying about people treating us bad, but yet and still we give these people access to us. And then we're mad at the fact that these people treat us with a low regard and a low level of respect. People will always disregard you if you keep allowing them to have access to do it. You got to set the tone. I will not allow that anymore. Someone on my live today, I want you to get hyped and say this with me. I will not allow what I allowed to, myself to go through last year. I will not allow myself to go through what I've been through the day before. I'm a new me today. And my new me starts today. And you got to hold yourself to that standard. There are a lot of people who do not have a high level of respect for themselves. Right? And this is a bad situation. You know, when you believe in you and you go around people that believe in you, what is that? What, that means sky becomes the limit. 
There is no limit when you believe in yourself. But when you don't believe in yourself, you, you're going to ultimately go around people who feel either lower about you because they feel low about themselves. How are you going to expect someone to be happy who is not happy? So when they're seeing you doing anything substantial, they're going to be very adamant about your, 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 your goals, your dreams, because they don't have dreams. When a person don't have dreams, they ultimately present you nightmares. Did you hear that? When a person don't have dreams, they ultimately present you nightmares. See, the problem with our dreaming is the fact that we stopped dreaming for a major reason. Because we went around people who wouldn't allow you to dream. It's beautiful to dream. There's nothing wrong with still dreaming. A, a, a lot of children uh, that, that was kids, when we were children, we had a very high level of, uh, of belief in ourselves and ourselves. But now, right, look at where we at now. We're in a space now where, where so many people are so bitter and scorned based on their decisions. I think the first step to recovery is admitting that you have a problem. This is AA today, guys. The first step to recovery, we're talking about healing. The first step to recovery is, is admitting that there's a problem. There's a problem. When a lot of pe people treat you bad, it's because you allow them to treat you bad. Because the first level of disrespect, you should have nipped it in the butt right there. You should have nipped it in the butt. You shouldn't allow someone to get too comfortable with you. And the fact of the matter is you're mad at these people, but you're not mad at the fact that you allowed these people to get too comfortable with you. People get comfortable. They get familiar real, real quick. And if you allow it. Soon as someone says something to you that you, you don't agree with, you nip it in the butt right there. Listen, I don't like that. Right? A lot of us are still fighting emotional traumas that we've been through as children. A lot of us. We still haven't healed from the fact that maybe our mothers and fathers weren't great parents. Maybe our families are not good people. See, but I always tell people the best thing about growing up is now you get to choose your family. So here's the dilemma. You cried about the family you were born to, which is your relatives, right? But you don't see the fact of the matter is you, you've, you're also attaching yourself today to the same kind of people who accommodate or complement the bad family you had. Let me say that one more time. Listen to this. I don't, I don't think you hear me. Watch this. You cry about the family you were born to as your relatives. But yet and still, you attach yourself to people now, right? Boyfriends, girlfriends, husbands, wives, friends. You attach yourself to people who accommodate, who accommodate the family members that you have. They behave identical to the people who caused the trauma in your, your, your initial life. But if you want to open up new doors in your life, you got to be conscious of the people that you're around. You can't be around people who don't challenge you. You can't be around people who don't have integrity. You can't be around people who don't have a moral compass. Their morals are on a decline. But then you believe that your morals will be on an incline. They're going to challenge you for all the wrong reasons. It's nothing wrong in life with being challenged. But you can be challenged for all the wrong reasons. This is why a lot of people have trouble, problems with healing. You have to heal. You have to allow yourself to, 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 to go into new spaces, right? You have to walk into rooms and believe that you're worthy to be in these rooms. You got you to gotta go around energy and accept the fact that I'm around this new energy because I want to be a new person. Sometimes a human has to shed his skin in order to become a new person. Sometimes you may have to bury the old you so you can accept the new you. And this is the truth. How are you going to become this new being when you're around people who are holding you back from becoming this new being? It's the truth. It's the healing process. Sometimes the scabs in your life may have not have healed because the wounds you're standing too close to them still. It's the people that keep giving you the same wounds. These are the people that know how to trigger certain emotions and feelings in you. They know what to say. They know how to trigger you. They know how to get aroused out of you. But you stay around these people, which prevents the process of healing. It will always be hard to heal if you're around someone that's not allowing you to heal. See, sometimes in life, look at the, the dilemma now, right? We have major wounds, and we're putting Band-Aids on these major wounds, not seeing that your wound is not, not Band-Aid accessible anymore, right? That wound you have may need major surgery. 
But yet and still, we put a Band-Aid on these big old wounds. It's an emotional distress. Trauma, right? The fear of, 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 of believing in yourself. I had to tell a guy today, right? He said to me, he's noticing as he progresses, a lot of his family acts funny with him. And I said, the reason why people are acting funny with you is because there's a phobia. And he said, what is a phobia or a fear? He said, what is it? There is a fear, right? It's called the fear of losing access, right? And when you say the fear of losing access, people fear that if you progress too far, they will no longer have access to you. So therefore, they'll try to hold you down. It's the crabs in a barrel mentality. Listen to that logic again. The fear of losing access. When a person knows that they're losing access to you, they fear it. So ultimately, they create problems and propaganda because they don't want to lose access to you. And rather than coming and saying, like, Yo, I want to be around you, they'll rather create more problems in your life. Sometimes we hold on to people that has always been a level of distress our whole life. They've always been problematic. Ladies and gentlemen, just because someone is your brother, your sister, your cousin, your mother, your father, whoever they may be, if they're traumatic and they're, and they're drama, it's time to walk away. Because in order to heal, you have to get away from these wounds. Sometimes people are the wounds because they know how to get you rattled up. They know what to say. They know how to trigger the emotions that they want to get out of you, the arousal, right? It's an arousal. And they know what to say, right? Some people aren't happy with their current situations in lives. And the sad part about it is nothing will change until they accept the fact that it's them. This is AA. We're in the class. The first step to recovery is what? Say it with me, guys. Admitting that we have a problem. We have to accept the fact that we have a problem. And that's the dilemma. If you don't tell yourself the truth, you're going to tell yourself a lie. And the sad part about the lie, you're only, you're going to believe your own lie. And that's the fear. And you should be scared that yourself, you're going to believe your lies about yourself. You should be scared. Because the more you believe the, the madness in your, your, li your life, you're going to believe the fact that things are going bad and, and the world is just against you. I think some people need uh, uh, to clean up their mess before they can enjoy their paradises. Some people need to clean up their mess. They've left so much garbage around their life, right, that they don't see that they have to clean up the mess. And it's bigger than just one trash can that you need to clean up this mess. You may need a whole dumpster. You got to start throwing things out, the, out, out your life, right? We, today, uh, Chris and Dre, we, we, trucking, we chucking everything out of our life we don't need. We chucking it out. We sending it off to the garbage dumpster, right? I'm going to tell you what I'm throwing out today. And I want somebody to tell me something they're throwing away. I'm throwing away fear today. In order for me to, to heal, I got to get out of my fear. I got to get out of my fear. Listen to that word fear. The word fear, definition why it says that fear can be imagined or it can be real. Most people fears or force, uh, it's forced, it's fake. It's not real. Let me say this again. The word fear can be imagined or it can be real. Most people fear it's imagined because we create the what ifs before the what ifs even happen. You tell yourself, what if I do this and lose before you even do anything? Let me say that one more time. Fear can be imagined or it can be real. And most people's fears are imagined. They create scenarios in their mind before they even make any moves. They tell themselves the outcome of anything before the outcome even happens. How are you going to be great, greater self when you, you say you believe, right? But yet and still you create all the bad narratives in your mind. It's you. Today we're chucking things out of our life. Someone said I'm throwing away guilt. I love it. Some misunderstanding, right? Somebody, what are, you, what are you chucking away today? I'm chucking away my, my fear. I'm ch Someone said they're chucking away guilt. 
Someone said they're chucking out old habits, right? I'm loving it. But you have to accept I did my best, and that's all I could have done. I, I love that. You know, I love it. We have to accept that I've done all my best, and I could fear of walking away, right? Listen, sometimes the people that you lose in life are meant for you to lose them. Because I'm going to tell you something about life. What's meant to be yours will always be yours. What's meant to be yours will always be yours. There's an old saying, and I value this saying. It says, if you love something, let it go. If it was meant to be yours, it will come back. So sometimes you think you're losing things, and, and if it's meant to be yours, you're only losing it for a season so you can progress and become the greater, greater self. You have to allow yourself to walk into your greatness. It's we're healing today. Today we're talking about healing. We have to heal. I, I've done a lot of bad to myself, right? I've, I've given myself emotional wounds, wounds that, that I disregarded that, that existed, right? I try to, to, to put Band-Aids on real wounds. I needed major surgeries. But I put Band-Aids on these problems, right? That's what we do. We put Band-Aids. This is why the wound is not healing uh, properly. Because you have a broken bone and you're putting a, 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 a Band-Aid on a broken bone. Say it again. It's a temporary fix, right? And that's what a lot of people don't understand. You have a broken bone and you're putting a Band-Aid on it. That's a temporary fix. We got to get major surgeries. Some of us really need to heal. But how can one heal when they're around the same people that's causing the wounds? How? And I ask this question confidently. How can one heal when they're constantly around the people that are giving them the wounds? Yes, you may have grown up rough. Yes, you from the hood. Yes, you from the bottom. Yes, you didn't have all the luxuries and the great things in life. But I'm going to tell you something. That is not a, 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 like, a, like a, what is the word I'm trying to go for? Let me say this one more time. You might have grown up in the hood. You might have had a worse start in life. But that is not a disability. Right? It should be a motivating factor to push you to become your better self. We use that, that bad head start as a disability. It's an excuse. And this is what we need to talk about. A lot of us have too much excuses. It's normal, right, to have a, 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 a doubt. It's normal. It's normal to have fear. But the problem is how much energy do you give to your doubt? How much energy do you give to your fear? How much energy do you give to your disregards? And, and the fact that things are not going the way you want to today. But the sad thing about life is if you wake up tomorrow, you get another day to start all over. Some of us are still sleeping on ourselves. I think the greatest sleep that anyone could have is the sleeping on oneself. Let me say that one more time. I think the greatest sleep that anyone could have or have, are still having is when a person is sleeping on their self. We got to stop sleeping on ourselves. And when you go around people that say, you know what, Tasha? Tasha, you was a lazy person. You know what, Jeffrey? Jeff, you was lazy. But today, Jeff ain't lazy no more. Today, Tasha ain't lazy no more. And I'm going to go around people that hold me accountable. I'm not going to go around people that keep reminding me of the fact that I used to be a certain way. Because ultimately, you're going to continue to be a certain way. And that's just a harsh reality. We got to accept healing, right? I've been sleeping on myself for too long. And, and it's time, it's time to, to let that go. Let's stop sleeping. Let's wake up. Today, we're waking up. Today, we're waking up. We're waking up. We're waking up. For those who are on my live today, I want you to wake up today and understand that we are our decisions. And, and not, not being afraid of the fact that things are not exactly where, where they want, you want them to be. Because I'm going to tell you something, and this is a, a deep saying for me to say this. When things look like they're falling apart, they're actually falling into place. And, and we want things to fall into place the way we want things to fall in place, but in life don't happen like that. Sometimes you'll be surprised at what, what, your, what your journey and your path is. We got to accept that. I allow myself to heal. Again, when things look like they're falling out of place, they're actually falling into place. 
But you know what we do? We force things to be the way we want. You have a puzzle right now, Dre, right? And this piece can't fit, but you're still trying to force this piece into this puzzle. And this is why it's not making sense. Because the puzzle of life makes sense as you start putting it together. Everyone is a puzzle. And this puzzle starts becoming more transparent as you start putting the pieces together. But you know what we do? We disregard the pieces. We force pieces to fit where we want them to fit. We force people into our life that we want in our life. We do everything that's pushing us back from becoming our better selves. And that's the major dilemma. But today we're healing. Today we're healing. No more accepting mediocrity or, or mediocre or the bare minimum. People will give you the bare minimum and you'll accept it. This is, this is some kind of trauma. Something has to be transparently wrong with a person to accept a person giving them their bare minimum. Listen to that narrative. You're giving me your bare minimum and I'm accepting that. Why would I accept someone giving me their bare minimum? Let me say that one more time. We say we love ourselves, right? But we allow people to give us their bare minimum and we accept it. But then we say things like, he don't love me, she don't love me. Then why are you dating and dealing with a person like that? If a person don't know my value, it is not my job to teach you it. Because there's a lack of respect. When a person respects you, respect is an action. Some people say you should earn respect, right? I disagree. Whoever created that narrative, I disagree extremely. And I'm going to tell you why I disagree. Respect shouldn't be earned, right? Respect should be given from day one. And what you do after day one ultimately determines how much I respect you. Everyone should start at 100%. So whoever created this narrative of, what do you say, you, respect is earned. How am I, how, how I going to sort of, I don't know you, you don't know me. Am I supposed to come kiss you behind first for you to respect me? That don't even make sense to me. So we should start at 100% the way we give respect. But a lot of us, I think, don't even respect ourselves. How do you respect yourself? You're not allowing yourself to heal. Somebody in this life today got to remove themselves from some of the things they put themselves attached to. They've attached themselves to some bad things, some bad people, some bad energy. There are people who have bad energy. And the crazy thing about energy is it transfers bodies. When you give someone access to you, they're transferring their energy into you. Whether it's intimacy, whether it's a handshake, whether it's conversation, because it goes from their mouth to your ears, right? Energy is being transferred. You have to understand that you have to be mindful of the energy that you're embracing and you're accepting. You can't entertain certain conversations anymore. It's not that you're bougie, it's that you're better, right? Why am I still taking the same dosage of medicine and I'm feeling better, right? We, we, we're healing now, right? And we're still taking the same med medical dosage but yet and still we're healing. We have to change the narrative, guys. We got to be more mindful of our decisions. We cannot go around people who are not accepting us becoming our better selves. There are people who challenge you again for the wrong reasons. They challenge you for the wrong reasons. And the reason why they're going to consciously continue to challenge you for the wrong reasons, because again, they fear losing access to you. But uh, setting boundaries is a, is a major key. Major key. Major key. Setting boundaries. A lot of us don't even know our own boundaries. What are your boundaries? When a person tells me, oh, she calls me out my name, why are you accepting it? Stay with me. When a man tells me a woman calls him out his name, what I say? Why do you accept it? When a woman tells me a man puts his hands on me, you know what I ask? Why do you accept it? When your children don't respect you, why do you accept it? When your job treats you like you, you're, 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 you're another option, you're just an option, why do you accept it? We have to do things and go around people that treat us better than what, what we, 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 the way we feel we should be treated. Because if you tell somebody to put a price on you, they're going to put a very low value on you. You got to put that value on yourself. You got to put that value on yourself. I want to say this real quick. They got this uh, thing I see on social media all the time where they always ask the women, Rate yourself on a one through 10. And a lot of the women that say tens. And a lot of men get mad. I don't understand how men get mad because a woman sees herself as a 10. It's called confidence. Every human has a right to believe 
that they're perfect, right? Or they look beautiful or they're attractive. Because if you don't see yourself as something special, who will? If you don't see yourself as something attractive, who will? If you don't see yourself as the king or the queen that you feel you should be called, who will? There's nothing wrong with seeing yourself as high value. There's a problem when you see yourself with a low value. You literally took yourself and put yourself on a clearance rack of life. You've literally taken yourself and put yourself on the clearance rack of life. You are a high priced item, but you're in a 99 cent store. Where does this make sense? We talking about healing people. We talking about healing, healing, emotional scars, traumas, pain, adversity, stress. I'm gonna tell you something, someone on this live gonna hate me for this, but this is the truth. Every emotion comes with you chasing, becoming your better self. So if you think you're not gonna go through stress, you're a fool. If you think you're not gonna be aggravated, you're a fool. If you think you're not gonna be emotionally distressed, you're a fool. If you don't think you go through family problems and chasing your better self, you're a fool. Every emotion comes with you chasing success. It's a part of your process. The maturation process of life is going through every emotion but embracing every challenge in order for you to get to the top of the mountain. Remember, the mountain has a peak, right? There's a peak. And when you get to the peak, only but so many people can be at that peak. At the bottom of the mountain, tons of people. At the middle, certain selective amount of people. But at that very peak, which is the top, only but so many people can be there. But you're going to go through every single emotion before you get there. It's a part of the process. But again, he or she who challenges themselves will ultimately become their greater self. You got to challenge yourself to heal. My sister, you may have been through things, right? You may have been insulted, disrespected, and violated by men. But sometimes we got to look from the inwards before we can project the outs outwards, right? Or project the outwards. We got to look from the inwards before we can project the outwards. Stay with me. A lot of the times when things go on in our life, we tend to talk about why this happened to me and why that happened to me. But sometimes you got to understand you're going through, through, through th these storms because there's a paradise at the end of your goal. You got to go through the tropical storms. You got to go through it, right, before you can see the sunshine again. But again, sometimes we attach ourselves to people who put us through these storms. So you wanted the storm because you're, you're, you're attaching yourself to someone that needs to heal their self. We have something called trauma bonding. People with traumas bond to people with traumas, ultimately feeding each other's traumas. And they bond, right? It's like welding yourself to a person that has the same or similar traumas. This is the problem. I will go around someone that's challenging me to heal. But we don't like healing because we believe that it's a part of life. I'm accepting the fact that surviving and winning is two different factors, right? I'm tired of hearing that a human has to survive. I don't want to survive anymore. I want to win. How do we win? By challenging yourself to be greater. By uh, embracing everything you've gone through, right? By accepting the, 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 tr the trials and tribulations. We have to accept it. It's okay to go through things. It's normal to go through things. You're not... Pro, you're not uh, exempt from life's uh, hardships. It's okay to go through things. It's okay to feel things. It's okay to, 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 to have self-doubt at times. It's normal. Because I wouldn't be who I am here today if I kept worrying about what everybody thought about me. I used to think about what more people thought about me than people thought about me myself. I used to talk myself out of doing everything because I was more worried about what people thought than them. But I healed. I healed. I healed. I, anybody on my live today, please say this with me. You've healed. If you healed, say it. I've healed. I am no longer the same person that makes excuses. I am no longer the person 
that wants you to feel sorry for him. I am no longer the person that don't embrace challenge. I am no longer the person that don't believe in itself. I am no longer the person that don't, that runs from challenge. I run towards the challenge. I embrace the challenge. Because the challenge is what's going to get you to the next level. We're going to keep walking away from the challenges. Ultimately crying about things that we should be doing. Listen. Your mother could have been a drug addict. Your father could have been incarcerated. Your mother could have never been a good mother to you. Your father could have been non-existent. But at the end of the day, you still hold the key to your life. The door is in front of you. And the sad part is there's a big bolt on that door, right? A big lock on that door. And you know what we're doing? We've been looking for the key all our lives, how to get that door open. But I'm going to tell somebody on my live this today. You've been the key the whole damn time. Let me say that one more time. There's a big door in front of us that has a major lock on it. And the fact of the matter is we, we're scared to go towards that door because we don't have the, the key. And we've been searching for this key, some of us 30 years old. Some of us 40 years old, some of us 20 years old, some of us 50 years old, some of us 60 years old. You've been looking for the, the key to that lock, not realizing the whole damn time you were the key. You are the key. I'm going to speak from the Bible. The Bible says we are created in his likeness. In his likeness, I'm a, I'm a child of my creator. I am destined for greatness. I speak this into existence with my actions. I no longer cry about when I'm going through trials and tribulations. I laugh because I realize something. I am the key. I am the key. And before you open that door, right, called greatness, let's open our minds. Some of us need to unlock our minds. And allow ourselves to, 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 to hear more knowledge. Allow ourselves to read more. Allow ourselves to become students again. Some of us graduated high school and we stopped receiving knowledge after that very last day. So when they called your name and you walked across that stage and you got your diploma, you said you was done. You said you was done. Some of us need to re-embrace or accept school again. Right? This is the school of the hard knocks now. Life is always going to be hard for those who want to be great. Let me say that again. Life will always be hard for anyone who wants to be great. Hard is a part of, of being coming great. We don't want to be good. We want to be great. I'm healing. And I'm accepting the fact that I'm healing. My wounds are no longer exposed. You know, you know, the problem with having exposed wounds, right? Listen to this narrative. I want you to stay with me, guys. When healing, if you have exposed wounds, you're more subject to infection. And the infection are the people that know that you're weak, you're vulnerable, you're hurt. And the infectious people come along and they take advantage of you. They know that that last guy broke you. Now the new guy coming along to break you even more. That's an infection. They know your, your last job uh, took advantage of you. And, and you're walking around there allowing a new job to take advantage of you. That's an infection. They know that life has beat you up and you started way at the back of the race. That's an infection. Because we haven't healed our infections. We haven't healed the initial wound and now our wounds are getting infected. And we're bringing infectious people around us who are pouring into your ear more infectious conversations, who are pouring into your ear more infection knowledge. The knowledge is more infectious. That's what we go around. Right? Well, I, I, I challenge somebody today to, 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 to take some alcohol and put it on their wounds. I challenge someone today to drink the penicillin in life. I challenge you. Because again, we're going to continue to have the problems that we're going to have as long as we stay around those infectious people. We have to heal. And I'm comfortable saying this today, I'm healing. 
and I'm feeling good about myself. When I look in the mirror, I love what I see. And I'm going to say this again. When I look in the mirror, I love what I see. I'm no longer upset. I'm no longer mad. I'm no longer angry because I'm loving what I'm seeing. I love who I'm becoming. And with becoming, you have to go around people who accept you. Go around the people, people that embrace you. Don't go around the people that's reminding you of who you were. Because sometimes you get reminded who you are so long, you forget who you want to be. And this is a major problem. We have to see who we want to be. Embrace who we want to be. Accept who we want to be. Challenge ourselves to be who we want to be. I'm no longer that little boy that was mad at the world. You're no longer that little girl that was mad at the world. Right? You're no longer that little person that, that, that used to be not raising your hand and asking questions. I'm that person now. I'm asking questions. I go in rooms comfortable asking, so what is the next move? What do you think I should do now? Right? With healing and, and growing, we need all of us need a mentor. Right? We need a mentor. We need to get around people that make us think bigger and better. Bigger and better. There's a lady, and I must say this, I'm inspired by her. You guys can look her up. Her name is Dr. Trisha Bailey. Trisha Bailey is a billionaire. She started off in Jamaica, lived in Hartford, Connecticut. Friday, that just passed, I had the luxury, I had the, the, the blessing of sitting down with Trisha Bailey on my podcast. Not only did I have the, 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 the ability to sit down with her, she also came to my home and sat down in my home with me and we spoke about business and investing in life. One of the purest souls I've ever met in my life. I'm a black man in America and I'm gonna say this on record. There's anywhere from seven to 20 billionaires on earth in America. Seven to 20 billionaires in America. Seven to 20. And one of them came to my house and sat with me. So if God is not doing miraculous things for me, I don't know what he is. Listen to that narrative. I just told you there is seven to 20 billionaires in America that are black. That are black. And one of them came to my house to sit with me and speak to me. God said, embrace all challenge and everything else will make sense. I think everything is starting to make sense now, right? Because I've been, I've been trading in my change for dollars. Everything is starting to make sense, Dre, because I've been trading in my change for dollars. I've been trading in my ego for knowledge. I've been going around people that challenge me for the better challenges. And I'm happy for it. I embrace healing. I suggest someone do the same. If you want to be your greatest self, embrace healing. Go through the maturation process of healing. Allow yourself to accept everything you've been through. Stop holding back your story. Stop keeping your, your testimony boiled in. Because a lot of the times when you see people act out enraged, it's because they never spoke about their problems. But in order to heal, we must talk about it. Men, it is normal to feel. Ladies, it is normal to feel. But in reality, if you can feel, you can ultimately heal. And that's the truth. Somebody on my live today, I suggest you learn how to heal today. Yes, your family's not supportive. I get it. I go through it also. But I built new family. I got people that are not my blood that treat me better than my actual family. And I'm okay with it. You know the reason why I say the people who are not my family treat me better than my family? Because the people who are not my family, they accept me for me. One of the things the Bible speaks about, about love, it says love does not impose its own will. The word impose says force. People will force you to be who they want you to be rather than accept you for who you are. I accept myself. And that is one of the greatest things that any human could ever do. Accept yourself. Love on yourself. Believe in yourself. Trust yourself. Because if no one wants best for you, then you, 
I don't even think you love you. Till next time, guys. Don't let that go over your head.